How are you doing, Internet? I'm Beanut, and may the fourth be with you. That's right, it is Star Wars Day, and I thought that it would be appropriate for me to take a look back at the Star Wars toys that I have and kind of do a review of them for you. Although, to be honest, with some of them, I don't remember exactly where they came from, you know, the brands and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure they are from the 90s, early 2000s, the latest of that, if anything, and most of them are connected, at least in some part, to the Micro Machines line. They're either Micro Machines directly, or Action Fleet, or something like that. So I'm going to go through all of these goodies, all these toys, and show you what they are. But before I do, <coughs> I do have these glasses, which I'm using for my supplies at the moment, and I got them for my birthday now two years ago, I suppose. But they are very nice, so I do have to thank my younger sister for them. So this one is the Rebel side, the snow speeder on the back, <coughs> and this one is for the Galactic Empire. So they may not be doing the job for which they were originally intended to drink from, but they are doing a very important job, at least for me. So just very quickly, in case you're wondering why I'm not using my turntable as such, it's, well, the batteries run out. That's not going to work, but I still want to do these reviews for you, and I will change the batteries at a later time so that I can continue using them. But in any case, we'll start off with the fleet action Nubian Starfighter, as seen in The Phantom Menace. It is an interesting design for a Starfighter, and you can see there is somewhere in it. And it does say Star Wars Action Fleets in here. And it does say 1996 on it. Star Wars Action Fleets. And it does look very much like the one that Anakin flew in that. It does have a set of landing gear which pulled up into the pylons and into the fuselage. And the cockpit does open as such and you have the little Anakin minifig inside. He's so small that he can't really see over the dash much. But you can bend over his waist and move his arms slightly. So that's little Anakin right there. And he can stand up. There's a little hole in there in his stand. There we go. And he's standing. But we mostly want to see him fly. Anakin Skywalker, the prodigy pilot. And the other thing that this can do, of course, is that R2 in his astromatic, astromech droid can pop up by use of this button. You can pop him back down by pressing down on his dome and press up on the button. And that's pretty much all it does, but it's also fairly good and these tips are a little bit rubbery, so they're somewhat flexible, but you still want, wouldn't want to bend them too much. And there's an indent here and up here for the weapons. And that's basically it for that one. And this one has got some screws in it for holding it still. It does have a port there for the stand that originally came with it. All of the uh, fleet action figures, they come with black stands, but I lost mine, so <laughs> that's not going to figure into this video at all. Next up is the troop, troop transport that was on my stand at the beginning, and this is indeed based upon the design of the Lambda class shuttle. Based upon, but clearly not the same in any way. And it is curious that they have this transport design, considering the transport design that shows up in X-Wing and TIE Fighter is completely different. 
you could compare that one to the shuttlecrafts from Star Trek, more specifically the you know, ones from the next generation, just flipped upside down. But in any case, this comes in a standard gray. It is an Imperial craft. Got the weapons in the front. And the standard bar engines in the back. Some nice detailing even on the bottom, plus screws. And of course, those are landing gear. We've got some storage over here. And the cockpit opens up. This mini fig of the Stormtrooper is most likely from the Moss Eisley set, which I show, will show you later. There were two officers for the front. I don't know where they've gotten off to, unfortunately. So with this one, you can fold up that, fold those down, and then it looks much more like the Tidarian shuttle flying around except that the dorsal fin is much shorter and it's based further forward than on the Tidarian shuttle but it's got mostly the same kind of shape the sail shape and you can see in comparison here exactly how similar they are and the other thing this has is there's a button on the belly you push that up, a little turret pops up. And you can rotate that around. Except that this plate would block it from firing backwards. But otherwise, <laughs> as well, it kind of lines up with the main cabin part. So you wouldn't want to fire it forwards either. However, as I said before, you have the weapon banks on both sides here. So that's pretty much covered. This would cover it mostly for the sideways arc. So that is the troop transport. The last full-size fleet action starship that I have is the A-Wing. And like the others, it has some pretty good detail in it all around. Though these stickers for the engines do look kind of funny and cheap. But otherwise, you know, you've got the arrows on the front, the striping, these gray patches. This is probably for fuel. <laughs> it's just like the gas tank. And the port for the stand down there. And of course the landing gear. One feature that the A-Wings had, at least after a while, was the ability to rotate the cannons. Though I think that was more of a feature of the RZ-2, not the one. And this might be the one ju judging based on the cannon shape, which is very simplified. Although that just may just be a function of the figure itself, the toy. And it, it, they are fairly light also, being made mostly of plastic with the metal screws. Just like the others, it has an open cockpit and the pilot minifig, which is refusing to come out at the moment. This one's flight suit and detail and helmet makes it look a lot like the pilot who flew into the bridge of the Executor in Return of the Jedi, so it might be that one. And I do would like to mention that the A-Wing is one of my mo favorite starfighters as featured in X-Wing. That was before the E-Wing and the T-Wing. Uh, besides the cannons, of course, you've got the concussion missile launchers here and here to take on the greater foes. However, the A-Wing is an interceptor. It's very light, <laughs> very lightly armored, very lightly armed. So it does interception and you know, scouting missions mostly, as well as escort. It can't put up very much of a fight, although it is fast. So if it gets hit by too much, it'll just go and explode. But its speed overall, because it's very high speed and such, also inspired the development of the TIE Avenger. Though before we got to that, you have Darth Vader's 
Tide Advanced X1. And this is a clear version, as you can see. You have some machine work details, mostly in the center of it, as well as the ball cockpit. So you can kind of tell from this that it's mostly made with parts borrowed from other ties. You've got the ball cockpits and main struts from the TIE fighter. You've got these solar panels from the TIE bomber. And these parts are mostly support. And the main reason to tell the difference, and the main way that you can tell the, the difference, the easiest way to tell the difference between the Advanced X1 and the full Advance or the Avenger is you have this bottom shaped like this, it's the X1. But if you have it like a wedge going sloping down from the top and the bottom, that's the Avenger. It's more advanced, so it has more to it. Uh, there is some writing in here, which I can't see on camera. It says 1995 on it. Moving on with the clear ones, we have Slave One. Boba Fett's as well as Django Fett's transport of choice. And curiously, it looks like these are just stickers rather than parts that are on top. Hmm. I should say that on this one, the port for the stand is... Is it here? It might be on the bottom of the ball cockpit. I don't see one anywhere else on the fuselage. Anyway, the one for this one is center here. I'm not sure if you can really see it on the camera because mostly of the clear material. When you've got the turret down here, it doesn't turn. These don't turn either. But in, it's like this in cruising mode and like this in attack mode. So the Millennium Falcon can always see when <laughs> Bubba Fett is coming to attack. But I've always thought that Slave 1's design is kind of like a helicopter, an attack helicopter, but it's also very cool. So it goes into landing like this, it attacks like this, but these are supposed to the side bits are supposed to turn as well when it attacks. So that's that one. Then our third and final clear is the Y-Wing. A slow, large bomber that the Rebel Alliance used. And thanks to more recent Clone Wars cartoons, we also know that the Old Republic used this a bit. But the version they had had some armor on it, so it looks sleeker. The, the Alliance, because they were on a tighter operational budget, they stripped some of the armor of it to make it more basic. And this is the part for the peg. But you can see this has a significant amount of detail throughout. And it's pretty nice, but it's also pretty cool. In TIE Fighter, what I would often do as I was flying against these things was I would leap around, come in between the nacelles, because TIE Fighters are extremely small fighters, match the speed repeatedly because they would try to slow down or speed up to lose you, found it with the lasers, and then jet away just before it explodes. Now, certain editions of the Y-Wing does have a rear-facing ion uh, cannon uh, turret. However, in X-Wing, they were fixed forward for simplicity's sake. <laughs> Although, it wasn't too difficult to make a game where you could control the turret. Wing Commander did it. I think they had to the saber and the broadsword that had turrets that you could control and you know, switching controls, although you couldn't fly at the same time. Uh, besides the saber, there was also the broadsword, which also had side turrets besides back turrets. But this one, when you fly, you have two laser cannons and two ion cannons, both facing forward, plus your missiles or t torpedoes. Uh, it's a pretty basic design. 
the wiring, but you know, it was serviceable for a long time until they tried to replace it with the B Wing. Then we come back to the Micro Machines Lambda class shuttle. And you can see the cannons on the front. And the wings won't move, of course, because it's just a micro machine, and you wouldn't want to break it by trying to force it. And the port is in there, and you can see pretty much the design and the details are fairly, fairly faithful to the original, at least for the size. And you have a turret in the back for defense as well although uh, lambda class shuttles were pretty easy to deal with in both x-wing and tie fighter it was the assault shuttles that were a pain and again i have the micro machine a-wing and as opposed to this full-size one you've got the canopy blacked out You've got the engines blacked out, and as well, it's bubble-shaped, but you've got the sort of in-out structure there as well. And of course, given the smaller scale, the cannons aren't going to be able to rotate the way they can on the other one. No, they're also very simply shaped and designed, so this is probably most likely the RX-1 version of the A-Wing, not the RX-2, but I still think it's fairly cool. And the design reminds me very much of a boat, but it's also very minimal. Of course, with designs like these, you may th think, how can they do atmospheric combat? Because they do, and they have repulsor lifts for that. Apart from the toys, <laughs> main events toys and Gloob logo here, looks very much like the book Star Wars, Jedi Search, which is volume one from the Jedi Academy trilogy. It's a pretty good trilogy of books, which I can re recommend. It's not the best one, but it's not the worst series of books either. So I will open this up. Mm, this does label it, hopefully, kind of for you. But you can also do from here. So we have some stands in here. But I brought the stand from the Excelsior in order to show you how these clip in. So you can do like that for the shuttle. I wonder if these work here. No. The hole is too big. Ewing. This is Natasi Dalla. She's an admiral who works in the Ma installation in the books. And she's also a persistent antagonist for much of the series, although she um, joins up with the Galactic Alliance later on. So she is in the EU continuity. Uh, one of the few females to have attained a high rank within the uh, in the Galactic Empire. Uh, this is Marth Duel. He either worked no, he didn't work on the installation. I think he was in the mine at Kessel. So he's an alien. Uh, although I can't remember precisely what his role was in the book. And it's kind of, kind of strange then that they d decided to make one of the minifigures of him, but obviously then he was in the book. The third and last minifig is of Kip Durin. He is a major character in the Jedi Academy trilogy. He is one of Luke's students who falls to the dark side. For a minifig, fairly well detailed except for his face. <laughs> Nothing is painted in there. The first ship here is the Sun Crusher. 
Now, as you can see, it has many turrets on it. Now, curiously, it is of a different design from the Sun Crusher in the series. Now, there's no picture on this book. But this was designed with a special phase armor that makes it nigh invulnerable to pretty much anything. You know, Luke puts it in the Star Yavin kip, pulls it out with the Force, so they end up having, well, spoilers, <laughs> to do something else to deal with it, otherwise it would fall into the wrong hands. And the reason why it's so dangerous is that it's equipped with special torpedoes, which can destroy entire stars, which then ends up killing everyone in the star system. So that is an extremely dangerous super weapon. And the Ma installation was used not only to develop this, but also to develop the Death Star designs. And we've got the Z95 Headhunter, also known as the X-Wing's little brother. For its size, not for its age, this is a Clone Wars era starfighter used by the Old Republic and one of the predecessors to the X-Wing, as you can see from its design. It has no S-Files, just two blaster cannons, but it's also small and maneuverable, fairly anyway. But when you face it in TIE Fighter, it's also a fairly soft target, fairly easy to destroy. But they don't all got a service from the the Clone Wars either, or later on, because TIE Fighter takes place around Empire. Uh, Mara Jade likes to have one which she had modified, and she usually had it inside of her ship. Here is the TIE Interceptor. You can see it's got two cannons there. It's also got cannons in the claws. It's actually supposed to have four. The quad cannons and it is the faster but unshielded version of this ship. Well, this is. There's cannons. But in uh, Defender of the Empire, the expansion pack for TIE Fighter, there was a renegade um, admiral who decided to equip his TIEs, all of his TIEs, with shields and hyperdrives, making them extremely difficult targets. But the Interceptor, like the other specialized TIEs, even without shields, they only got used by the elite within the Imperial Navy. So you can see that, and compare its design to the Advanced X-1, not only because it has the TIE Bomber's solar panels, but also the regular uh, ball cockpit and struts. And you can compare it that way. For comparison's sake, I wanted to try to find uh, which book had the Sun Crusher on its cover, because I knew that one of them did. So over here, this is the design that they originally had for the Sun Crusher. To me, that looks much cooler and more threatening than, uh, what is it, a top? <laughs> Maybe. But that's the design that they went for the toys. Maybe they didn't want to make it as threatening as a toy, as a children's toy. But here it is on the cover of the book. This is the second volume. I like the Z95 Headhunter and I like the TIE Interceptor the most. And I don't mind the minifigs, although I wish they had chosen some other ones to include. Uh, here's Dala on the cover of that one. And maybe something that looks like Exar Kun as well. This is a playset. Of course, it's based on 3PO's head, but it's also the Moss Eisley Cantina. Let's open that. Oh, right. I forgot I had filled it with these. So these ones are from a simple plastic uh, diameter thing 
that was of the Hoff base. Uh, these are, believe it or not, serial prizes. So you've got landed X-Wings, we thought their S-Foils uh, deployed, and you can see from the way this one is splitting, that is fairly sim simply put together, just peg to port. And Y-Wings, again, not the most accurate, but functional for what they were. And I also put a Klingon Bird of Prey and a Ferengi Marauder in there. And two bottoms of a Romulan Diderix. Oh, another Y-Wing. Oh, look, <laughs> Land Speeder. And this is fairly well detailed as well. You've got some machine works in it, an engine, and a cannon. It's also pretty well worn. Now let's see. We've got the uh, bay in here where the Millennium Falcon would have rested as it was taking off. And you can see in the stickers some stormtroopers. We were firing on it. <laughs> then inside, you've got the actual cantina with some benches and you know, pegs there. You can see on the stickers, you've got the band. And you've got some other people sitting around. And more band and bystanders in the stairs leading up there and then the door and I wonder if I have anything in there yep well, this is Greedo nice detail there I'll put him in his seat um, and you can see that he has his blaster on his side underneath the table and Greedo didn't have an inkling of what was coming we have this guy. I think both this guy and this guy were the bounty hunters. But I can have one of them play the bartender and one of them over there. <laughs> well, you can have Hung and Greedo talking about the bounty and Greedo threatening to bring Han in and Han fires first. <laughs> and then because of the blaster fire, the imps have come to investigate. You can see them a bit better. So one of them's got a big gun, the other's got the small gun, and this one has a much bigger head. You want to see that one more time, all you have to do is to reset the chair is push it forward and sit Greedo down then push down on the table and he goes flying out of the canteen. Obviously when I put those away from the last time I played with them I had the foresight to put the minifigures that were related to this away into that little uh, cupboard so that I would not lose them. And I'm glad I did. Because to encounter that without them would not be as fun. Now, of course, we've got this one shaped like R2. And I've always thought that R2 might make a good spaceship. <laughs> so the way he opens, the dome is like that. And we can take the uh, barge, Jabba the Hutt's sail barge. Peg there. Don't look too finely at the detail, you won't find them. And put it on the peg. We've got the Rancor Beast, no surprise there. Very nicely detailed. And the shackles in its teeth and size. Poor baby though, we know what's coming from him. And then we have 
everything that's up here. A little compartment down there. And all that space there. And we've got some stickers behind Jabba and Slicious Crumb of his court. Including his major domo and the trainer of the Rancor. And we've got some mini pigs. We have a Grimorian guard. Grimorian, not Gamora. Put him on the side there. We have Lando Calrissian in his disguise as a bounty hunter. And we have Leia in her disguise as a bounty hunter. There, now he's standing on there perfectly. So we push Jabba forward. That releases that. There's no special mechanism for raising this though. And then the Rancor can come at him. Let's close this. And then drop the gate. Not that we get much movement that way, but if we bend the anchor over like this, then we do get a little bit. Unfortunately, I do seem to have lost my Luke. So there you have it. My surviving Star Wars toys of the past 20 years now. <laughs> oh, does that make you feel old? But did you enjoy that trip down memory lane? Do you have any Star Wars toys that have survived to this day that you used to play with as a child or as a teenager? And even if you didn't, don't have something that now that you had then, did you have a favorite toy that you played with originally? So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in the next one. And have a great Star Wars day. Bye bye. New challengers approach.